Design Fitness is our online training program for those who enjoy CrossFit, but who aren't trying to be a competitor in the sport. And in this video, Training Think Tank coaches Adam and Becky Rogers break down the training for the month of February. All right. Design Fitness. Um, we are getting close to wrapping up the first month, the first cycle of Design Fitness. Um, I mean, Brand new program. How's it been going? I, I've been really... It's fun. Pleased. Yeah. I've been really excited about it. I think the community of people that we've got in there has been almost what we would have pictured ahead of time. It's people who wanted something new. They wanted some extra structure in their training, but they also wanted to make sure that it wasn't overbearing. It wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't taking away from other aspects of their lives. So and this is in contrast to the design program where it's for competitors. So, right, right. So when we try and sell design fitness to somebody, our goal is to make sure that it's really transparent that what the priorities are. The priorities in design fitness are consistent training. Um, it's not to say that everything's scaled, all the days are going to be easy. You know, this is just get moving on a daily basis. There is challenging days, there's strength days, there's energy system days. But the big difference between this and some of our other offerings in the design path is the idea that people inside of design fitness don't necessarily have goals built around competing. So we don't have to worry about volume progressions to get them ready for open-based workouts. We don't need to worry necessarily about making sure that there's all the sufficient requisite skills necessary for all the movements that are going to get exposed to at all the varied competitions. Um, we do want to get them better at certain capacities, certain tests. We have monthly challenges inside of every cycle, but I think that that exists separately from objective competition. Do you think that that would jive with what, how you would describe the program? Yeah, no, I feel like everybody can get better and they can get stronger and more fit and with this program, we just take into consideration that that's not the only thing that people have to do in their day and in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a time efficiency option or like a priority as well. We're assuming that you've got a lot of stuff going on. Training might not be as high up on the priority list for you as it might've been in the past or for somebody else who wants to compete more and needs to spend more time in the gym. So our goal is to deliver no more than a 60 minute session where we give you structured warm ups. We give you a session that has time checkpoints built in to make sure that you stay accountable to your session. And then you can get in and out and be able to get on with the rest of your day. I think that's a really promising option or a really positive potential option for people who need to make sure that they stay accountable. But it's also saying like, Hey, if you can protect 60 minutes in your day, then you can get this session in. Yeah. I think everybody really likes that time check. Process. How's a how's, uh, month one gone? How's the first group, Becky? Oh, I, I really like the group. I feel like people are very supportive and interactive and people liking each other's workouts and yeah. commenting and all of that. Yeah. You've done some of the sessions. Have they been what you would have pictured beforehand? Yeah. I mean, I, well, Adam, you wrote the last previous month. So I've written all of January so far, every month, every cycle, we're going to have a new coach sort of come in, take over the programming, work around a different priority list, work around a different monthly challenge. So I've been in charge of January. I know that you've done some of them. Um, how would you compare it to some of the other training that you've done so far? Um, I, it's definitely shorter sessions and you can tell the focus is on the burpees, right? Those are the sessions I've done are the ones because yeah. the burpees are the monthly challenge. And you did the initial monthly challenge too, I right? I did, yeah. And I feel like I'm going to crush the redo. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it seems like a lot of the notes. So what we did is we have built a couple of burpee based progressions in there that are based off of percent efforts from your monthly test, your initial test. Um, everybody's just been blown out of the water. Some people are it was going seven minutes of burpees was the first month's challenge. Yep. Right? Yes. Yep. So well, then we we'll talk about the second challenge here soon. Teaser, teaser. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your initial test score. We build some progressions based off of whatever your score might've been. Um, giving you target paces to be able to hold. People have been just blowing that out of the water. They seem to be getting more resilient. They seem to be getting more efficient. I, yeah. I'm i excited for the retest. Um, I'm excited to watch people do the retest. I'm not excited to retest <laughs> it myself because I know my chest is going to be sore, yeah. but it seems like everybody's setting up to really blow that out of the water. So it's it's one thing to say like, hey, like we're not interested in competing, but we are very interested in still trying to chase improvements over time. Right. And those improvements are going to be um, sometimes based around the monthly challenge, we're also going to have like sort of secondary and, and tertiary goals in there as well. Um, yeah, it's, so, like, it's not, it's not to say that these people don't have any competitiveness in them. They're just not trying to be a competitor. Yeah, no, you, you have know? to be competitive to do seven minutes of burpees <laughs> and then to train to you get just might better not at care it. If you just slay everybody on the leaderboard, yeah, yeah I think you, know, you want to be better. You, you want to pick your battles, right? Yeah. That's probably a little bit better way to say that. So um, I ran the month of January. Um, we're getting ready to finish up that cycle. We'll finish it up with the retest. Um, transitioning into February, which is also her birthday month, Becky's going to be in charge of the programming. So 
what we wanted to do with this is we wanted to have you walk us through your template. So tell us about your training goals, um, how you're going to lay things out over the course of the week. We'll talk about some of the priorities that you have set aside in there. Sure. Like, we'll kind of start with big picture view. Um, I like to alternate upper body and lower body days usually. So the first day we're going to do a little bit of power clean positional work, just kind of work on pulling from the floor, making sure that you hit the right positions off the floor, making sure you use your legs to lift the weight instead of your back. Yeah, but taking the time to make sure that the positions in the power clean are, you know, found and, and appropriate. Like you spend time working on those positions as opposed to just doing 20 power cleans for time. Right, right. right. There's still structure. It's it's still focusing on an aspect of the movement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. taking the time to slow it down. Right, yeah. right. And then we'll, we'll do some double kettlebell front rack squats. I really like oh, that movement because it's so, it's deceptively hard. And You like them because your legs are strong. I do. I like them. And we're going to kind of progress that from a tempo. So it's going to start gross and just get grosser. That's kind of fun and different. <laughs> yeah. Most people probably haven't ever done uh, yeah, a lot of double keb I like kettlebell stuff. to do sneaky core work and that's a sneaky core work. Exercise. So the reps will stay the same and you're going to increase the time under tension inside of a yes, set? Yes, yes. So, so these are on Mondays, right? Mondays, okay. yeah. And for people who are new that don't know, your setup for this program is five days a week or it's six days? Six days. We actually had people want an, something on Thursday that's a little more structured. We have suggestions for things to do on Thursday, but I have them doing just 25, 30 minutes of moving machines. So Thursday is kind of like a rest active recovery yes. day. And then Sunday is the rest, rest day. day. Got rest it. Day. Yeah. So uh, and we're on Monday right now. Sorry. We're on Monday. And then we have some single leg stuff, step ups, bending, and then some glute work too. Okay. And then on Tuesday is upper body day. So we have some strict pull-ups, some strict dips. I'm all about strict reps when it comes to upper body push pull. I like to make sure people are working on that. Yeah. You're starting that with some initial tests as well though. Yes. So you can build your training around where people are at, trying to yeah. meet them where they're at and progress them from there. Yeah, for sure. Always. And then um, a little short sprinty kind of crossfit workout. Cause I feel like that'll be, that'll be the fun part of the day. <laughs> People still want to be able to touch that stuff. And yeah. they, you know, even in, inside of a program like this, where I think that there might be a stigma around too much of it being scaled. Like people want to walk out of the gym, still feeling accomplished, still feeling, you know, fatigued and like, Oh man, I really went hard today and I feel good about it. So yeah. I think having those in there is important. Yeah. Still. So that'll be kind of a hard session. Um, then Wednesdays kind of more energy systems based, I guess, if you want to call it, we start out with some, bike sprints. And that's just going to be a progression where I want people to work on their power okay. on the machine. I don't think that a lot of people try to do that very often, just sprint as hard as they can yeah. every minute. What's the value behind that for you? Uh, well, for me, I feel like it helps you be become a more powerful person. The, the more oomph you can put into the machine, the more oomph you can put off the floor when mm. it comes to Olympic lifts, for example. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, that will just kind of hope and watch the wattage, hope people get powerful, more powerful as the weeks go on. Okay. And then we're going to use those numbers to do a little bit of an energy systems workout with some biking at a percentage of that. And then some burpees, thrusters, just some kind of movement that you can do fast for 30 seconds. We just did burpees. So yeah. I wanted to include that. Everybody's going to be burpee monsters yeah. by the time they get yeah. to this point. <laughs> but it's basically sprinting on the bike at a percent of your max watts your that max. you found before. And then yeah. another high turnover movement that yeah. might be more CrossFit specific. Right, gotcha. right, right. Yeah. Okay. So just get comfortable doing that at a higher heart rate than okay. what we had been doing this, this past month. Yeah. Then Thursdays are optional movement day. At the very least, I have here to try to get out and be active and move around for, you know, get eight to 10,000 steps a day is something that I try to get everybody to do. Yeah, I... I think it's important to talk about that a little bit more because inside of the month that I wrote, like there was a lot of, um, man, I want more. Like I just yeah. want to be able to do more. And it's important to make sure that you do have some sort of structure on what your active recovery day is to make sure that doesn't turn into something that it shouldn't. Right. Yeah, so yeah. talk about like the, what you gave them, the guidance that you gave them and also like why it's important to have that sort of point in the week where it's like, Hey, take a step back, right. decompress a little bit. Yeah, I mean, looking at the week, right. The first day is more strength based. The mm -hmm. second day you got that hard CrossFit at the end. Third day you have some energy system stuff that is also not easy. You need a day to take a break from that. Yeah. And rather than be still and not do anything, which I also think is not helpful. Right. I want you to be out and I want you to be moving. So at the very least just walk, get out and walk, be active those people who want more and have time for more, I have a 30 minute, it's 
rotate through machines, do step ups, do lunges, something that you can't really do fast. And I have in the notes, do not push the pace. You should be able to have a conversation with yep. somebody while yep. you're doing it. Yeah, I think that guidance is important because I think that sometimes people see those active recovery days and they see like, hey, 30 minute AMRAP yeah, at 70% an effort. AMRAP. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it comes 90% yeah. effort and they're on the floor in a pool of sweat afterwards. Yeah. So making sure that they have some structure in there and also making sure they have context in terms of what we want out of that day of the week and why it's important to keep that stimulus the same. Right, right. And I have it optional because- you might do it on Thursday and then by Saturday you just feel not good and yeah. that might be too much for you. Yeah. So just take it out. Just move around if you can that day. Gotcha. Dead. All right. What do we got Friday? Friday we have some power snatch complexes again, working on positions, but not full snatches, just, you know, if mobility or technique is an issue. Yeah. So we saw that there was power cleans on Monday. There's power snatches on Friday. Why are we not doing the full version of the Olympic lifts inside of this path? I think we've decided if, if we're not in a CrossFit testing focus, there's not really a need to do the full lifts. You know, you can get the benefits of explosive movements with the power versions and not be in weird positions, not be able to squat all the way down. If you have shoulder problems, overhead squatting, you're just going to hurt yourself. So yeah, the positional demands from squat clean or squat snatch might actually limit somebody's ability to get benefit out of the, this version of the Olympic lift. So we just wanted to remove those obstacles as yeah. much as we could. I'm not necessarily thinking about getting stronger. I'm thinking about like the explosiveness of it. So gotcha. we just need to be explosive and we need to be good off the floor and we don't need to squat clean or squat snatch for that. Cool. So power snatches. Yep. Power snatches. And then we have a little front squat, back squat, um, super set. It's kind of, it's, Kind of similar to what you did. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to do it. Just kind of build on that, having right. a front squat, back squat after each other, but a little bit more rest in between and a little bit more different of a rep scheme. And then we'll do some hamstring and some glute work because I always like to do posterior chain stuff after squatting days. Yeah. Protects the knees, protects the yes, hips. Yes. Yes. And then Saturday is- Hold on. That sounded like a delicious little Friday. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite days <laughs> of this. What do you Are do you after you train? Do you just like plow the ice cream or no? What does that mean? It means you plow the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and then you eat it. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. Saturday is another upper body day. This is bench press and ring rows. Um, a lot of people might think, why are we doing ring rows? I can do pull-ups and kipping, but mm -hmm. ring rows are another one of those kind of foundational gymnastics movements that I think if you do it in a hollow and you're focusing on where you're yeah. pulling, they can be really hard. <laughs> they can, they are really yes. hard if you do them right. So that'll and probably better back activation. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I have those programmed. And then we have another CrossFit day where it's um, intervals kind of AMRAP four minutes, rest two minutes and repeat or AMRAP eight minutes, rest four minutes and repeat kind of also in my mind, I was thinking some people might want to do the open coming up. So yeah. I have some CrossFit stuff on Saturday because I thought maybe that's when they Lay in the groundwork it. just yeah. in case. But it's still like, I mean, when we do interval format like that, compare that to like, hey, just AMRAP 12 minutes, AMRAP yeah, 16 minutes. Yeah. Like there's a reason that we want to break things up like that and put rest breaks in there. Like our goal is not necessarily to see what you can do in a fatigue state. Our goal is to push you a little bit, but also make sure that the quality of your movement stays high, right? right? Like think, the intent is preserved. I think with the exception of Tuesday, the short sprinty stuff, all of the other cardio that I have, I tell you how fast to do it, yeah. right? So the biking on Wednesday is at a percentage of your max. The easy stuff on Thursday, you should be able to talk. The stuff on Saturday is at this effort. You should be able to do this for eight minutes, even though it's a four minute AMRAP, stuff like that. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about um, the ring rows in there and the idea of like, you know, how the intent of how you do a movement is super important in terms of what you're going to try and get out of it. So let's use that to sort of segue into the monthly challenge. So um, pow, in, pow, pow. in January, the challenge was seven minute burpees. Like we talked about, it's brutal and awful, but it's also a test that's really easy to measure. We, we did it because it was sort of like universally accessible. Anybody could do it with the standards that we put out. So what's the challenge going to be for February? The February challenge is a hollow hold. The drum roll. Oh, come on. <laughs> Too late. Hollow hold. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> hollow body hold. Yes. As, as long as possible. Gross. As long as possible, but still do it the right way. What's the right way? The right way is tension that's any gymnastics Where's thing Becky at on the TV? that i oh, try to up. 
coach people through. Gymnastics are all about tension throughout your whole so body. We've got ath athlete Becky and Wee. coach Becky. Yeah. So this is our starting position of a hollow body hold. This is the extended, like this is where we want. We have some scaling options. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is what I would like everyone to be able to do perfectly, but I know that that probably isn't the case. So we have scaling options. Points of performance. What are we looking at? Your low back is pressed to the floor. Your core is engaged. And what people probably don't focus on as much is I want you to squeeze your butt. I want you to squeeze your knees. I want you to squeeze your feet. I want you to point your toes. I could probably point my toes better. Yeah. Pointing toes, driving your I hands down towards your hips, towards, towards your heels. heels. Yeah. yeah. All of that tension is basically the intent that we're going to try and get out of yes. this movement. We don't want you to just get into a position where you feel like your core is working. We want you to get into this systemic hollow position that has this like global curve to it, right? The yes. whole body has tension throughout because yeah. that's how the carryover that's how it works. Translates, yeah. 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 So as long as possible, I mean, if you're there by yourself, how do you know when to stop? Um, for the most part, when you lose any of those points of performance. So if your legs can't be squeezed together, if your butt loses its tension, if your low back comes off the floor, that's a big one. As soon as you feel your low back, don't try to be a hero and like keep holding on to it. Just stop. You're done. So say I tried this and I couldn't do five seconds or 10 seconds of it. Um, what's the next scaling option that you would recommend? The next scaling option is to just kind of tuck your knees to your chest. Um, this is Adam. I was just kind of right one. What? Is this the right one? This is the right one. Oh. Ta -da. I was just coaching him, but see, so that kind of eliminates that long lever of your legs. So mm -hmm. this is a little bit easier to keep your low back pressed down, but he still has his knees squeezed together. I have, he has his toes squeezed. You together. had to remind me of the knees. I had to remind him. Times. Yeah. He's still, he's reaching towards his heels. And the big thing is he's still breathing too. I tried. <laughs> Do you, how's your, how's your prison D on this? <laughs> what? <laughs> Go on. Your prison defense. I can't tell from the video if you're, those cheeks squeezing nice oh, and yeah. tight. It's hard. It's kind of hard to squeeze your butt from that, this position. So that's one I wouldn't worry about too much, but the leg tension is knees and toes. Do you think pushing, putting something physically between the knees would help in this position? Well, I mean, for me, like I couldn't keep my knees together and I wouldn't have done it if you didn't continue to cue me. Yeah. If you need, if you need to squeeze like a foam roller or something, you gotcha. can do that. Gotcha. All right. And then we've got one more scaling option. This is the last scaling option. So feet just flat. Yeah. Gotcha. He still has his knees together. He has his feet together. He's still reaching towards his heels, <clears throat> mm -hmm. He's breathing. Still... You can tell Ryan's breathing whenever it's you, you had me sold <laughs> with the awesome Monday, awesome Tuesday, Wednesday, optional Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And then you give me this challenge and I'm like, screw you. Never mind. Well, if you want to be good at gymnastics, nope, you push ups, me. ring muscle ups, Handstand push-ups, kipping, toes bar. You need to be good at a hollow hold. I also like if you just want to be able to express strength, you need to be able to create tension in your midline. So whether you're doing gymnastics or even whether you're trying to just move weight, you know. Yeah, that's, that's the selling point. Tension. Yeah, tension. And I think um ability to control your midline. So for the Chris's of the world who don't really care about doing gymnastics, what's the value of having this where he, he just wants to lift weights? Will progressing his hollow body position help him? I think that it but will. But I don't want to. I think, <laughs> I think core core bracing isn't just sucking in your abs. And like, that's what people think bracing is. Bracing is like 360 degrees all the way around. And yeah. this teaches you how to brace. It's weird. You brace through your low back whenever you're doing this. Yeah. The other thing that Ryan was telling us, and so Ryan's training base goals are around long distance running right now. As he started to do more midline work, specifically like hollow body positions, a lot of the back issues, like the low back aches that he would get from his running volume started to re like reside a little bit because of his ability to control his midline, to control yeah. his pelvis and, and pelvis, how it was yeah. connecting to his low back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the monthly challenge. We're going to test and retest that. Um, also that will make it more fun to actually want to do hollow body holds knowing that I'm going to oh, test it's and retest. So important. And we do it. We're going to do stuff on Monday and we're going to do stuff on Wednesday yeah, and we're so going to do stuff on Friday to get better at it. A couple of different exposures throughout the course of the week. Um, we're going to put a new sample week up so that people can see how you program versus how I did it before. So inside of that, are we doing the first four days of your, of your cycle? Yeah, we can do. Yeah. So people can see what that they'll Thursday see the test and like then they'll too. sort of yeah. take us all the way through Thursday. So that way can, they can see it all, how it's all so laid out. So if you want to get that sample week, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash design and then go down to design fitness. And then you'll be able to get the sample week on the page once it's up, which by the time you're listening to this, it should be up. Awesome. All right. I'm excited to see your program and I think I'm going to do it. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs>